All right, y'all. We have a very two very special guests here today. We're joined by Bullet for My Valentine. We got Paj. We got Jamie here. Yo, yo. Guitar and bass here. And uh, we are in Maryland at the Fillmore for a sold-out show. I'm so excited. Bullet for My Valentine is back here in the U.S. and North America. How long has it been since y'all have played over here? Uh, we came back, did like a week and a half of shows in May. But before that, it was 2018. Yeah. With Avenged wow. Sevenfold. Yeah. Did we come after that, 2019? Well, I think uh, the last the last time we played you was 2018 with uh, Trivium. Right. Yeah. I just remember the back the backstage area. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a while, obviously, because of COVID and all that. Yeah. So, it's, uh, it's good to be back. It is. It is really good. Tell What can you share about how the band kind of came together in, in the early years? Uh, we're, we were a, a sort of a a band before that, look, nowhere near as sort of at this sort of level, you know, pro- professional band. But we tried for years a, a band called Jeff Bill John, uh, with some of the previous members. Um, you know, we started writing our own stuff. Uh, we managed to get, you know, we worked really hard getting support slots with uh, sort of name bands across the country and stuff in the UK, uh, and. Uh, we just we we never gave up. That was the main thing. I mean, although we almost gave up a few times, we never did. Yeah, and we just kept going and going and going and writing new songs and we're just doing our best. Uh, because we we had the dream, you know, we followed the dream and uh, we we believed in our hearts that we were good enough and that we wanted it bad enough and we we got it. So I love that. Yeah, you know, we were driven and uh, we just we just didn't stop until we had it. So. I love the persistence and that's a recurring theme with bands, you know, like yourself who have gone on to make it huge, um, is that, you know, they, they went through a lot of stuff to get to where they're at. It wasn't this glamorous road of just no. taking off. And <laughs> I've had far from glamorous. I've been sevenfold, Slipknot, all the bands I've talked to have, there's been so much heartache that they've gone through to get to where yeah. they're at. And, yeah. Uh, that is certainly seems to be the case with y'all. And so what, what did you grow up listening to for both of you? What were the what were the songs that influenced you? What were the bands that influenced you that got you into metal? I think for me, like our parents' like record collection was like old school eighties clown, like we were talking about Motley Crue earlier, so Motley Crue, White Snake, Ozzy, and then I discovered then Metallica, and they just got heav- heavier, heavier and heavier, like you know, Pantera, Sepultura, you know, Slipknot, all the, all the new metal. Yes. So um. But yeah, as far as like introduction to music, it was like the old school 80s for me, like, you know, and uh, all the, the glam, glam era, like, yeah. pretty much the same for, for me and all of us, I think. Yeah. You know, I used to wait for my brother to go out uh, of his room and I'd play his sort of LPs on yeah. his records on his record player and uh, just sit there. What records were they that you were jamming? Oh, Iron Maiden, Summer in Time, Motley Crue. Hell yeah. Tim said, uh, and then the Black Album, he had that, and uh, that, that changed everything, yeah. I think it was the Black Album because, like, yeah, yeah. so it's all like different, like you know, it made metal accessible again. I think, right? Yeah. And uh, it wasn't pop, obviously, no idea pop, but it, it just redefined yeah. uh, heavy metal for a generation. I think that album changed my life too. The Black Album it really it just fucking blew my mind, yeah. dude. It was, it was just. I mean, I was very young when the album came out, but yeah. looking back on it, I think the reaction was like, "This is soft." I was able to see that. Yeah. yeah, it was like it was like hits, and yeah. it was like you know, for me, I don't think it's soft. I think there is a certain element of like writing a, a huge, accessible anthemic song like yeah. Sandman, but um, you know, I think at, at the time, like you're saying, like something soft, you're going from like a Justice for All to the Black album, yeah, like Bob Rock, like a massive yeah. producer. And I bet the fans were kind of like you know. The fuck is this? Yeah, what is this? <laughs> and then now you look back and it's just one of the top oh, records of all time. Even like so- the sound sonically, like, I mean, it yeah. uh, still stands as probably one of the best sounding, I, do, I think, anyway. One of the best metal albums, do you mean? Sounding. Yeah. Who are some of like the dopest musicians you've gotten to meet where you're like, oh, fuck, this is like a childhood dream come true? Um, I know, we, like I said, you met people in the on, well, we met Vinnie Paul and me. Yeah. Wow. Just before, um, you met in food, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. But uh, like we played a festival in Texas back in 2016, and that was probably the last time we seen him, wasn't it? Yeah. We seen him, and uh, 
<coughs> you're such a badass guy. Do you know what I mean? And everyone says the same. You know, such a cool guy. And, I never uh, had to meet him. Yeah, oh, I was like you said, massive like Pantera, one of my favorite bands. Bro, yes. And uh, yeah, so obviously Vinnie Paul. Have um, you seen the um, the celebration shows? Yeah. The God, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so good. We Zach um, is insane, bro. We we missed them, didn't we? Because we come back from yeah. America back in May. Yeah. Um, when they did rehearsals and they were playing like Amsterdam, mm-hmm. but we figured out we could have gone to watch them. Yeah. So we, we get this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so we still, we're still yeah, yeah, we just not quite catching up with it, but hopefully next year. Yeah. Right. Like you were. So for you, you know, when when the band first was kind of taking off, what was the moment for you when you're like? This dream I struggled for for so many years, this this situation I went through so much pain to get to is starting to materialize. For you, what was the moment, if there was one, where you're like, oh shit, this is really popping off for me? Um, I think it was when we played the Snicker stage and download. I, I don't remember the year, but it was like second second year we played there, second time we played there. And uh, I, I can't remember how many, many was in the... It's like a outdoor tent thing, and we finally released uh, the EP, or or yeah, it was the EP then. So it was after we released that, and that's the first time I heard a song sung back at us. Awesome! And that was the point where it's just like, what the yeah. is going on? This is yeah, and, and I, uh, that feeling, and I'll never forget that feeling. Obviously, every night, we're fortunate enough to uh, to hear that every night since. But uh, that was the moment when it's just like, yeah, okay. No, no, I get it. I remember the first time I heard you guys, obviously through Matt, and 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 what was what was that like being featured in gaming, and 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 what did that do for the band? Do you think? Uh, I think it was, it was obviously very positive, really big in America. That's that's what I hear. We we hear the the most of that. That's you know, we heard it again today in the meeting. We just like, oh, you guys on Need for Speed, with it? Need for Speed, and the Blood, and and Madden and stuff. But mostly in America, that's where people have sort of got into us from from those games and totally. and that that side of the the coin or whatever. But um, ironically, me and Matt used to play in Need for Speed Need for Speed years and years ago be, before we got before we got signed. So we were big fans of that game, and then being featured on right on that game, not the same game, but a different uh, when Need for Speed Two or whatever it was, I can't remember. Right. Um, it's, it's quite ironic, yeah. actually. How did you and Matt meet? We were in school together, man. Really? Yeah, yeah. same school. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, like high school? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bro, that is yeah. neat. And you guys have stayed friends all that all this time. It's we weren't actually friends in school. We knew each each other, you know, in the later years. But um, it was more um, after that, you know. He was, he was, it was early days of him being a musician. But then I, just as I was leaving, just before I was leaving school, I started picking up guitar a little bit. And then a few years down the line, you know, when we were in jobs and stuff, he had his band and I had my band and it was just, everyone wanted to be in a band. And it, it, sooner or later, we just... So you and him after high school is when you kind of got into playing. Yeah. That's a, that's interesting that you met after high school and you both got into music. You don't really see that at that level. You know, typically it's like, I started when I was 13 and I'm... Yeah. That's really cool, man. That's Cause really I was saying to a label rep last uh, yesterday afternoon at lunch that uh, I mean Matt started out playing drums and I was in the front row in the in the gym hall in school and they they did a like a s- small gig in this band they, they, they had made up in school and like a talent Matt, yeah Matt was playing uh, playing drums then and I was just like whoa this is cool this is, uh, you know and then uh, and then like say we left school and he he then he went on to guitar. And I, uh, I actually started playing drums to, to be in a band first, but I was playing playing guitar. But I bought the drum kit just to be in a band right. while I was learning guitar. So, yeah, strange. You know, the Poison was such a game changer. What do you think it is about that album that went so crazy? Like, I, I, I just still listen to that album. It's a classic record for me. And there's just something about it where you're like, man, th- these are these are very heavy songs, but also on first listen, they're just bangers. What yeah. do you think it was about that? It's, it's a mix of heavy and melodic, big yeah. choruses, um, something about the time and the place, the formula, um, the connection. 
with, of the music with the fans. I don't know. It was just everything about it was the stars aligned. Yeah. Um, it was obviously the right time, like you said, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just like that album. Like I remember in high school, you know, I was in school at 16 and that was the album like you know like all my what friends. is that like for you bro because you've been in the band now for some time yeah yeah you've been in the band for years now um and your fucking vocals are badass live Jeez, man. Can... you have a great screaming voice for those of you who don't know uh jamie does a lot of the screaming as well I'm the best. great vocalist you really sound very good uh with your vocals and uh but you also grew up fucking loving the bands i would love to know your story i don't think i've ever even heard yeah. this so weird. Yeah, I don't even think I've because it's like you you're you were like just into the band and then you yeah. become a fucking member and now you've been in the band for years. Yeah, yeah. So basically like, so <laughs> when the poison came out in twenty what, two thousand six or five. Well I started playing in bands when I was like fourteen, fifteen. So um you know, from like school and that's all I wanted to do was be in a band. Right. I had no interest in school whatsoever. So like I was like, you know, recording our first demo. Did you get good with, grades? With my band. I did all right. I, I think I had uh, in school. I had like D average. Yeah, school. I think I did. I don't have a college yeah. degree or anything. No, same. Thank God for I'm, YouTube. But no, it was just music for me. Yeah. You know, like I said, I used to finish school and then went to school and play like a gig. As soon as you got out of school, went, like you, you were just straight into music, like yeah. Time? Well, when I was in school, yeah. So um, you never had a real job per se. <clears throat> no, not really. I was just. Uh, well, I have, you know, done, I've done bits and bobs and stuff, yeah. but um. But yeah, my old my old band Revoker, we got signed to Roadrunner. So oh, okay, I, was, I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I, I was like, that. uh, that's what I mean. So going through school, I was in a band Revoker, right. and we same type of story. We grew up together. We was in school together. So you got signed to Roadrunner. You're like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because that was dope to get signed. Yeah, yeah. On a band. Well. Yeah, you were. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we met. What, like, what was you know, the style of music? It was like hard rock, hard rock metal, but it's more kind of like. Now I have to listen. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you yeah. some stuff. So it's like like kind of Pantera. Heavy metallic, yeah. Six and sort of yeah, yeah. Almost southern e It's got that southern southern e vibe, like, you know. But um <coughs> That's so cool. Yeah, I didn't man. know that. I didn't yeah. know you were signed to Roadrunner yeah, before. Yeah. That's so, badass. Uh, like you said, it's uh I'll send you some stuff over. Right. Of a blast. I will definitely listen. Um the so at what point how do you figure out I'm getting into fucking bullet for my Valentine? This is around well, like twenty fifteen, twenty six. I'll tell you a cool story, right? So like two thousand six I went on a family holiday to to Florida, to Disneyland, and um, we were down uh, by the House of Blues, and as I call this band, Bullet My Vampire. In the US? Yeah, yeah, in the US. And uh, she was me and my sister. We looked on the House of Blues, and it was like, oh, Bullet My Vampire, they're playing tonight. And I was like, I know them, they, they're Welsh. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was the first time I, I seen them live, and I was 16 at the in time. In the US? Yeah. Where you're not from, on an international vacation. Yeah, yeah. So Talk we bought, about that. That's epic, bro. We bought tickets, went to watch them. And that was on the Poison tour. So that was pretty much the, you know, what got me the bullet. I watched them. I was like, fucking hell, these guys, you know, really good, like, you know. But anyway, after the show, I, I went outside and um, I see Matt outside signing autographs. Oh, shit. So I went up to him like a, like a little fanboy. <laughs> Can I have a picture Sign with you? <laughs> I signed my tits. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I just said, you know, I think I said, you know, Welsh. <laughs> Shouted well, shut him. So yes, I met him at a photo, and, and I, I remember saying, "I was like, oh, I'm in a band," and I said to him, "I was like, um, I'm gonna, pl my band is gonna support Bullet one day." I just said it'd be like a cocky to thing. him. Yeah, yeah. And then ten years later, <laughs> ten ten years later, I'm in the band. Like, do you know what I mean? Playing the same venue. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> ten years later, it's 2016. We played the exact same venue in the House of Blues in Florida to get. You did with Bullet, yeah, yeah, that, and I wild. and I was on stage with them, like you know, that's insane. It was, yeah. So, 2016, ten years later, you're on stage with them at House of Blues. How do you figure out? Okay, I'm going to join this band. How does that come together? Um, what what do you mean? Now, when like, uh, like, how did you? How did the wheels start turning for you to join Bullet? Well, obviously, you you were looking for a new member, yeah. Right, and, um, I know there was a departure. At, yeah. When did they reach out to you? I think it was like 24, 15. And you obviously, get the call and, you, and you're and you like, they're like, dude, we need you to join Bullet and what's your reaction? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, so <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I was uh, at, at the time talking about work because obviously my band Revoker, we kind of like split up because uh, 
things are working out with uh, Roadrun and stuff. Sure. Because Roadrun so, went uh, through a lot of changes. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, and, and, around about that time. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I, I got a job, you know, I was I was working in Cardiff. And obviously... How do you deal with that disappointment? I'm sorry, but like... I, yeah, I, no, that's, I, I, that, that's heartbreaking because you hadn't signed to a label yeah. and then you had to go back yeah. and get a job. It was it was difficult, but in my head, even though that, you know, we, we split up and but things were rolled, right? right. I, I didn't give up as a musician or a dream. I was just like, you know, I just got to do this for the time being. I love that. And I was still writing and coming up with plans of starting a new project and stuff. And I was grinding at, at the time... Like my put me and my partner Sarah found out we was having my my boy Jesse. Yeah. Do you know I mean, so I just give me even more of a drive to like yeah. you know, I gotta you know do something, and then um, yeah, one night I was working and I had a text off Padge. He was uh, he just said yo you fancy uh, auditioning for Bullet <laughs> and uh, what's your immediate response to that? I remember I was sat down. What did I, you think at that moment? Was no to live, it? Yeah, I, I was sat down. I was in like a little dingy little office thing down in Cardiff. Not an office job, but in like a back, right. back in like a garage. And I, I read, I looked like that, and then uh, I just knew straight away. I was like, "Yeah, here we go." Do you know what I mean? And um, you felt like you're gonna get it. No, not in a cocky way, but yeah, but like in a like, I'm not gonna. Oh yeah, anything def- stop? Yeah, from getting definitely this. because obviously they had a few other guys at the auditions, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just said, you know, did you know who the other guys were? Was there anybody that you were like, oh fuck, I, I gotta. Out- no, no, I didn't at the time. No, yeah. I didn't know because he just said, "Look, learn three songs." How well did you know him at that time, Padge? Well, uh, I was, I would say, I met Jamie uh, years before Bullet, but um, you were taking for a band, weren't you? And then I found out he's in a band called Re- Well, it's a Four Assembly, but then yeah. then he yeah. it was Revoker, so I became a fan of, of them, and uh, yeah, we did some yeah, we did. We did demos for the second Revoker album yeah. in uh, at my place. Your producer as well? Glorified demos. Well, hey, that's so <laughs> cool. That's, I, I love that. Yeah, it's, it's just for fun, you know, and stuff. Like, but I, probably your glorified demos probably beat a lot of people's stuff, probably. They're yeah. probably pretty good. Yeah, it's good, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, uh, yeah, and they were really good. And then it just kind of, you know, didn't, noth- nothing... We still got them, like, but yeah. nothing really came of it. I think they, they disbanded, and and uh, Bullet cracked on doing their thing. But um, obviously, knowing Jamie for so long, and knowing his vocals and his right. style and his uh, his range, and he did vocals for the other band as well. Was, I was the front, front. You were the yeah. singer. Yeah. yeah, I gotta listen to this band because yeah. like, you have great vocals. You really do. Revoke, really do. Yeah, revoke it. Yeah. yeah. So check them out. Yeah. Well, the thing is, again, I don't want to think. Like, obviously, we signed a road runner, but. They only released in the UK and Japan for some reason. So Spotify out here, right? You can't get the album. Really? Yeah, yeah. Only on YouTube. Oh, we're getting the album and we're linking to it in the description, yeah. y'all. We're gonna have yeah. Jamie's vocals up here because y'all already know he's a great vocalist. And yeah, we so boot. So, so how does the audition go? You get auditioned and well, he sent the videos first, the three, oh, three videos. A video. Yeah. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, straight away, I, once I saw the videos, I was like. He's the That's one. The guy. He's the one. Yeah, what I knew he could. I knew he could play? sing, and I knew he could do back and vocals. So he's a front man, right? And a musician. Although he's on the bass now, I right. knew he could play uh, rhythm guitar. And you and Matt compl- complement each other so well. Yeah, man, it works. Like you know, when uh, but yeah, the uh, the three songs I done was "Waking the Demon," hell yeah, "Your Betrayal," I think it was "Raising Hell" as well. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, so it was three, and like obviously because I was a guitarist, I didn't have a bass. So I, I rung my mate up at the studio. I was like, have you got a bass guitar? Have you got a camera? And can I use your, <laughs> right. your, your practice room for like an hour? And uh, fair play, he done it. You know, he lent me all the stuff. I just done it and, and sent, it, sent it across then. And so um, no, at that point, no in-person uh, rehearsal. Mm. And so you send it over and then what do you hear back? You, does it take a few weeks? Does it take an hour? Like you well, immediately, it seems like. It was pretty quick, yeah, because I sent sent them the, the the video footage. I think it was like the day after the message off management saying, "Can you be in London next week?" So yeah, I go up to Metropolis Studios. We have we have a jam. It was great. Like it felt really, you know, just felt like if it was always there. Do you know right. what I mean? And then um, I think we done one more rehearsal, wasn't it? One more auditioning. One yeah, one more audition, and then um, that was that was. yeah. So the third one, then they were like, "Manager, oh, 
you know, like you come back up to London to have another rehearsal. I was thinking, fucking hell, boys. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, like? But no, I, I kind of had an idea because, like they said, you know, we'll sort you out, uh, you know, travel, hotel, don't worry. So I thought, oh, that's nice. That's nice, yeah. But yeah, we went into the studio then, and that's when they said, you know, we'd like uh, like you to join. Right. And you were like, um, hell yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Fucking right. And, uh, so and that was the, I think that was the night you finished uh, the Venom. Yeah, we were recording Venom at the time. Recording Venom at the time. And you finished the record that? That night. So we had like a... We needed an extra member of Sharpish, but I mean, he was just a right... Right. Right choice. What do you tell your family? You go like, you know, I'm, um, I'm going to be joining this huge band and yeah. uh, shit's well, like, going to change. Yeah, like I said, my family was all obviously aware of Bullet like from back in like 2006 right. when I went to watch them, do you know what I mean? And, um, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So like, <laughs> I, like I said, I've always been in bands aside the road running and whatever. So when I said, you know, I'm auditioning for Bullet, they were like, oh, fuck, you know, that would be awesome if you, right. uh, if you get it. And, uh, do y'all feel like the fame and the, and the, the success, like, do you feel like it ever like fucked with your head? The only part that gets difficult for me is living the sort of the lifestyle every day for 20 years. Yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, yeah, we've, we've got, we've done the whole get drunk fucking be assholes and <laughs> misbehave stuff. And it just gets boring after a while and people sure. get in trouble. And that's when you just got to sort of have a word with yourself and stuff like that. But it's just. You forget who you are in other people's eyes. Right. Yeah. And uh, like I went to a bar the other night and um, we, we had already done a solo meet and greet in the venue. And I just went to a bar with a couple of friends to have a drink. Fuck if I did. Right. Every two, five seconds, it's like, Patch, can I have a picture? Patch, can I have a picture? And wow. It, it's like I, you, you don't mind and right. you just want to be nice. And, you know, at the end of the day, you, we, we're only here because of right. the, the fans and the people who like our band and stuff. But fuck me, it, it, it drains you after a while. And it's just right. like, fuck, please, can I just have a drink with my friends? Right. I don't want to be rude, but right. fuck it. You just turn around and it's it's just constant. Even yeah. in fucking Tesco's doing your grocery shopping, yeah, you're in right. the toilet roll section. Yeah. And you turn around and it's like, <laughs> with a multi-pack, you know? It was the same with me. I was, uh, could you have a picture of my daughter? <laughs> I was uh, grocery shopping and uh, this guy came up to me, he's like, oh my God, you do your own shopping? I was like, ah, <laughs> yeah. You do your own shopping. <laughs> they you have see, you do your own shopping. Do your own shopping. I think people over glamorize rock oh, and roll. I think they think yeah. that it's like like the movie uh, with Mark Wahlberg, like yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, rock, rock star. Yeah, God, I love that movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like, that's definitely a bus a bus movie, though, isn't it? Yeah. What do y'all watch on the bus? What is sports? Anything? Lot of UFC. Oh no, nothing. No, it's like, uh, well, I watch movies and stuff, but we've been jet-lagged of her and uh, three in a row. The tour just kicked off. Yeah, yeah right, they went to New York, but obviously we, we went to dinner with the lake, with the grand tour and stuff. So we haven't really had a chance on the oh. movies. Right, it's been pretty much flat out for the last week, you know, so. Right. Yeah, two people watch porn. You watch a lot of porn? I don't know. So you're like a porn uh, addict. Check Fadge's uh, <laughs> search history. <laughs> <laughs> I have a laptop. That's amazing. <laughs> um, when um, when you're watching porn, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, um, what do you do for fun? Like, what are your hobbies away from rock and roll? Like, what are what do you what do you do? I know you're big into UFC, yeah, yeah. MMA, for, in sports and stuff for sure. Like, yeah. what is the stuff that you enjoy doing? And also, I know you are a family man. Yeah, I think yeah. For, when I'm home. I just try and spend as much time as I can, like I said, with the family, with yeah. my boy. You know, I love going on bike rides, doing I mean, taking him as well. Yeah. And uh, just, just spend time with family, just having yeah. family time, like, you know, like I saw some UFC. I love, like, a Saturday night back home. UFC is on. Yes. A few beers. That's tomorrow night. Food. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I love that. 100%. Uh, yeah. And what about you? Uh, uh, just chilling mostly. I, I Obviously, I do the the recordings sort of stuff on the site uh not so much when we're busy with the band um but obviously the last few years has been quite quiet this year hasn't though right but um it's usually music based but yeah i like to i like to go out and dine you know the, as you get older you, you can it's not all about getting fucked up yeah for sure your mates you know yeah it's nice you know i do like socializing go for a few beers and whatever 
but having nice food with your right. girlfriend or something or, or your friends and just serve. Uh, I think because quality because we weigh so much as well when we home we are like make an effort to make as much time like right with yeah with the family. family back home like do you mean because we weigh yeah. so much sure just gotta make the most of it yeah and y'all are away a lot i mean because yeah. y'all have been to the u.s twice so yeah. far this year uh on two different tours and um you know i wonder like during the whole shutdown and all that stuff um is that something that like affected y'all negatively do you think it was like stressful not being able to tour and play and stuff because that was a long time i thought it was all over man yeah. i thought that i thought the world was going to end yeah. um it was weird when it was a weird time yeah like it was a very weird time very, very I had positives in that as well like i said i was home yeah with a family i used to scale war zone call of duty yeah dude that's <laughs> why so it was hell yeah like eight in the morning to like eight night doing <laughs> <laughs> and uh I mean, that was like, you know, but still, it was shit when I had, like, you know, the situation yeah. everyone was like, Right. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it was horrible times, but I discovered gin. But, uh... What? Discovered gin. Discovered gin. <laughs> gin, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A lot of... But no, uh, for us. fortunately, we, we were right in... We're ready your new album. Yeah, our... The, the Gravity Cycle finished in, like, November 2019 in Mexico. Right. Oh. We was planning to have a year off anyway. Right. So that year, like 2020, when everything just went, you know, yeah. shut down. We were right in. Yeah. It was demo, wasn't it? Yeah, demo in. So it kind of worked, you know, right. it wasn't that bad for the band, like, you know. Yeah, in that sense, it, it was... It's bands, I usually, sorry, for like, re release an album like January 2020. Yeah. And they like, literally could And there were some good records that came out yeah. that got really overshadowed by that. There yeah. were some some banger records that and, uh, they couldn't tour them, so it was just Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's so added by the COVID thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. People yeah. Were like you like you said, thought it was all over. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean I, I I still couldn't believe that. What are what are the next plans for y'all to to make music, you know, and, and what's your approach to that? Because it feels like there's a big shift happening. Is it going to be singles? Is it going to be albums? I've talked to Corey from Slipknot and they're kind of like dealing with that as well. Like, are we going to do records now? Or are we just going to do singles? They've already, you know, kind of released individual singles. Like what's the, what's the future going to look like in that sense? Do you think like what, what's the approach? It's probably undetermined, but yeah, Undet undetermined. Yeah. I know what you're saying. It's, it's really strange. Like you should sit down with an album you know, an L, a record, an LP, LP or something, listen to both sides. Right. From start to finish, all eight or 10 songs or 11 songs, open the cover, look at the pictures, read all the lyrics, uh, look at the credits, just read everything and just smell it. Right. The smell, the feel of it. Yeah. Now it's just one fucking song and then skip. Yeah. yeah. Playlists, random, skip. Yeah. Goes from fucking corn to uh, slipping out to yeah, You don't get that musical bullet. journey with no. a single. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I just think the attention spans of especially the younger generation. Yes. For like a twelve album twelve song album. I just don't think they got it in them to, to listen to it. Like do you mean which is, you know. But I'm the same though. Like, do you mean I I don't know. I think it's definitely changing. Do you know what I mean? I think it's more singles going forward. I'm not saying Bullet's gonna do that. Right. But I just think um that's where the market might be heading. It seems that definitely. way. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. All like, like EPs. But albums will still be, you know, I think happening. But yeah. I think some bands will alternate between, you know, it's like, yeah. but for me, there, there are pros and cons. I mean, the singles, you could just sit back and go, all right, I'm writing nothing but heaters. Yeah. You know, I'm just uh, obsessing yeah. over one song and making it, you know, yeah. immaculate. I don't know. It's, uh, yes. Yeah. I think really that time when it's like, no one knows what the fuck. No one knows. Right. But I, I still think a, a physical copy of a full length album, you know? Right. With all the singles on air. Because otherwise, if you're printing like uh, physical copies of single, new single, new artwork, yeah. new single, it's going to cost even more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's all that way you know, as well. Right. It's really strange. Or you're doing. And people still three want EPs every two years, yeah. you know? They're yeah. Let me know in the comments. I know a lot of you are probably going to go keep it's, making albums. Yeah, it's an interesting, yeah. it's an interesting subject. Yeah. And neither one, I don't think there's a right answer. We've talked about past influences. I like to ask people, like, are there any up and coming artists that you're interested in? Are there any bands that you think don't get enough attention that you're listening to that you're like, oh man, I think they're pretty cool or bands that do get attention. What are the, 
I think these guys are really interesting. Bended. Yeah. And they, yes. they, they rip, man. They, Shout out Vendor. Yeah, yeah, no, seriously. Yeah. Like, I, I was surprised when I saw him. I was like, oh, Vendor, you know, there's a, yeah. you know. Kids and slipped out members. Audit, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all that stuff. But they're cool kids, man. Yeah. I mean, they rip. I've got them on the podcast as well. Yeah. We've already shot that. And they're, they're all players. Great well. It's great, yeah. They're, they're grinding as well. Like, do you mean? Like, going yeah. back to what you just said, but they still, you know, they get in their van, sleeping in their van. Yeah. yeah. And fucking tour it. And that's the only way to do it. That's one of the things that people, I think, don't realize about them is yeah. that they grind for real. They're yeah. in a van. They're, people don't realize, like, anyone who goes, like, oh, you know, their kids are slipping out yeah. or something, like, sit in a fucking van and tour out. I think exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's grueling. Yeah. It's what it's very hard. Like, and, well, then you keep going. Uh, yeah. They're going for it, and and they're really working hard, mm-hmm. and and their and their live show is brutal. Yeah, yeah. I love those guys. I think that's where a lot of respect from this side of the of this the the barrier right. comes, comes. You know, yeah. all the bands and so y'all have really enjoyed having that. them out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. yeah. they super nice guys as well. Yeah, they yeah. are. They are. Yeah, I love those guys. Yeah. Well, I just want to say first of all, thank y'all for making the time. This is before a show. They're about to play sold out. Y'all's music has had a huge impact on me. I love the fucking band, and you're one of my favorite live acts to see, so I know you're going to rip it tonight. And y'all are welcome on the channel anytime. Whenever that new record pops, I'll come out to a show and have y'all back yeah, on yeah. it. 